Best of r slash entitled parents episode 39. So our story involves EM entitled mom, DW daycare worker, and ED daycare director. So my best friend is DW. They work in a toddler child care center. They and their co-workers are all very qualified, child-loving individuals. Well last week someone anonymously emailed the center and said that DW and other co-workers were taking naked pictures of the babies during nap time. Obviously this is a huge accusation, so the center took it very seriously, even calling Child Protective Services themselves and initiating an internal investigation where they allowed CPS to look into everything. CPS found nothing wrong and cleared the center and DW. Well this week DD overhears our EM bragging to another parent about how she called in fake abuse because she was pissed at some policy the center had. So DW and DD call CPS and tell them what they've observed. And now CPS is investigating the EM for abuse. She was contacted by police for making false reports and all three of EM's kids are getting kicked out of the center. Thank you. Next. Never thought kids this entitled existed, but boy was I wrong. This is a Luung one so TLDR at the bottom. Cast. EM. Entitled mother and D. Dad. Not sure if he was entitled he kinda stayed out of it. E.G. Entitled girl and E.B. Entitled boy, MN, my shop manager OM, nice man slash older guy who works at the shop with me, ME, a socially awkward non-maternal potato. Story. So, I work in a relatively quiet little charity shop in a nice town with my manager, MN, and a really nice old man, OM. We are all volunteers, and both MN and OM are super nice and just want to work with this charity to better people's lives. I'm in there volunteering for my doof. So I just help sort donations in the back. OM is usually on the till out front. Okay, so I hear the door ring as someone enters, which is unusual as we had been super empty that day, so I peek out of the back room to see who can be bothered to come in when the Christmas markets and Santa run is going on. Enter EM and E. Bear in mind I have a crappy memory so most of the EP text will be approximate. EM. Okay. D. I'll just come looking here for a while. You can go to Waitrose. I'll only be 5 minutes. D. Okay. To OM. Do you guys have a DVD section in here? OM. Just around there. Yeah. All one pound. D. To EM. Could you have a look for me? Thanks. Bye. D leaves. And I just go back to clothes sorting. All seems pretty normal. Suddenly. A small. Red haired girl of about 7 or 8 comes wandering into the employees only at the back. She's wearing what looks like a super expensive locket, and isn't really looking at me. Me, being super great with kids, is incredibly startled and unsure how to react. Both OM and MN don't know she's in here. ME, here, you're not supposed to be in here, are you? E.G., my mummy used to work here so I can go wherever I want. Okay, I have no idea how to react to this. She's wandering towards the kitchenette and I start to panic. ME. Is your mummy out there? Shopping? E.G. M.M.H.M.M. This kid is not taking the hint. Bit welp. Being socially awkward AF. I'm in shock. I don't want to upset her or make a scene. So I just warily go back to sorting. Praying against all hope she'll lose interest and leave. She looks in the donations box. But can't reach in which was a relief. She wanders behind me to MN's desk and starts going through boxes of expensive jewelry that need sorting. Taking them out of the boxes and dropping them back in randomly. I'm just worried she's gonna steal something. So I keep an eye on her. Praying MN will walk in. And lo and behold, she does. I'm saved. MN comes in, takes a box out, and leaves. I don't know whether she didn't see the kid, or if this is a regular occurrence, but WTF MN. Help ME. I look behind me, and EG has finally stopped fingering all the jewelry. But now she has something even more entertaining. The stapler. She's just stapling and stapling, running it out, and then her brother comes in. Spoiler alert. He's so much worse. He also makes a beeline for the jewelry. He's like 10 or something, and wearing an elf costume. After another few stressful minutes, they both run back out onto the shop floor, with the stapler. Welp. Not my problem anymore. That's when it all kicks off. The following info is from the ruckus I heard. I didn't see this happen. EB. Mummy. I don't wanna be here. I want more chocolate. OM has chocolate. 
OM, well, you've got to be a good boy if you want a chocolate biscuit. Otherwise Santa will bring you coal, won't he? EB, SC reams to his is so ch a bad day. All these f kngb rats pissing me off. OM and MN, gasp that's not very nice, now is it? EB, continues to scream profanity whilst running around the shop. Apparently, at this point, EG is going around stapling all the clothes. I can hear it clicking, and her mum finally gets involved. EM, come on now, EG, we've got staples at home. There is no apology or attempt to stop the child. I can hear things being thrown around, presumably by EB. This continues until MN asks them to leave. I can tell it's awkward because they know each other, but boy, EM, why are you asking us to leave? Is it because of EB? Say sorry for swearing. EB, EB, I wasn't swearing. MN, yes you were, we all heard it. EB, in a whiny voice but mummy, I don't know what sorry means. Okay, that probably explains it. I can tell her parenting must be awful. No sorries, and EB probably said effing brats by copying her, but it still shocked me. Eventually he apologizes, and MN gets the stapler off of EG. EM, he is only swearing because that girl in the back made him upset. You need to tell her off. That's why he's mad. WTF lady. I've never seen my manager so shocked. OM looks quite upset, as apparently my MN told me afterwards EB said he was a kiddie fiddler and that's why he wouldn't give him chocolate. MN, you need to get a better grip on your children. EM, OP had nothing to do with their temper tantrum. Please leave the shop. EM, I'm glad I left this filthy shop. Nothing in here was worth buying anyway. She then leaves, with her kids, but not without EG trying to steal a fluffy toy up her coat. I'm surprised she hadn't taken any of the jewelry, which was a relief. Whining ensued, but they eventually left, EG crying and EB screaming bloody murder pushing his nose against the glass in the door and licking it. Delightful. OM and MN come into the back, slightly shocked. MN is carrying a bunch of broken kids toys that EB had knocked over slash thrown. She didn't seem too bothered about them, but she was mad about the stapled clothes. We spent the next 20 minutes picking staples out of skirts and dresses. Apparently, she usually comes in, but only with EG and D. EB is known for being an absolute nightmare. Also. She didn't leave the shop, she was let go for apparently doing nothing and just eating all the biscuits on her shifts, and constantly calling people and taking pictures of baby clothes being sorted in case her friends wanted them, in which case she would put them at the bottom of the donations bin so she could sell them for like 50p to her friends when OM and MN were out. TLDR. EM lets her two brats in the employees only section, go through expensive jewelry, steal a stapler and staple clothes, Swear like demons, run around and break things, then tries to get me into trouble for it. Thank you. Next. Info. My older brother has played baseball for many years now and is pretty good at it. Enough to the fact that occasionally, on some of his teams, some of his teammates really hated him being better than them. Eck. Entitled kid Ed. Entitled kid's dad B. My brother D. My dad F. Family friend F's. Friend son. Also plays baseball. Story number one. So as I said earlier, my brother plays baseball and has also been on many different teams. One particular team however had one kid who was terrible to my brother along with many other kids. I'm talking name calling, insults, and something I'm discussing later. This kid, Eck, wasn't a very good player and hence, he hated my brother being better than him and trying to say that he was using a cheater bat. A bat that makes the ball go farther by basically emptying the middle I think. When he hit a very good line drive. The worst thing Ek has done that truly painted his entitled picture was this. One day, my brother's team had a tournament so we drove out to the Tony location. My brother brought all his gear and was very prepared. It turns out, that Ek forgot to bring his cleats for what is a multiple day tournament. Ek then asks my brother to borrow his extra pair of cleats to which he agrees to. As a side note, cleats are pretty expensive and can be around $50 to $100 plus depending on how good they are. The cleats that were lent to Ek were very good as my bro takes good care of his stuff. Ek uses the cleats for the entire Tony. When B got them back, the shoes were totaled. They smelled horrible, had many scuffs, 
X foot messed up the interior, etc. My family was not pleased with this in the least. Now I can't remember everything but this is generally what happened next. My brother confronted Ek about the messed up cleats and asked him to pay for new ones as the original ones were pretty much in too horrible of a condition to use more. Ek refused and said how he didn't owe my brother anything and that it wasn't his fault to pay for the shoes he destroyed. My brother then talked to the coach who called Ek and his dad out for using my brother's shoes and not paying for the new ones. Needless to say, my dad then talked to Ed. The conversation went similar to the one with Ek in which Ed refused to give money for the new shoes and says that it's not his fault slash responsibility to pay for this. As a young child at the time, I even found it immature that a grown man wouldn't pay for the shoes that his son destroyed and saying that although it was somebody else's shoes, Ek wasn't irresponsible although he was the one who messed them up. More events similar to this are starting to come up but this is a long term thing as some things are still happening. Story number 2. This involves F, F's, and Ek. This one's pretty short but it involves more of Ek's annoying deeds. At this time, Ek switched to a team different from the one him and my brother were on. This new team he joined also happened to have F's on it. Ek didn't and still doesn't know this really, lol. This is more recent but F's is also better than Ek. His gameplay is worse than his attitude. This again upset Ek and this is important shortly. So a recent tourney popped up and F slash X team joined and began to play in it. This is also still unfolding so go easy. Now kinda like what happened in the previous story. This involves the player's cleats. Either Ek didn't like F's or he was a retard and forgot his shoes again seriously how do you forget that? But this time, without asking, he went into FS's bag and took his cleats. F's wasn't very confrontational so he borrowed somebody else's shoes by asking them. F didn't know this until he noticed that F's didn't have his own cleats. It turns out that Tech and Ed took F's cleats home with them and so F's and F had to drive to their home and had to get their pair of cleats back. I'm not sure what happened from there but I'm pretty sure that F's got his shoes back but as of right now, there is still hatred between Ek and our friends and family. X mouth runs like the wind but me, as a girl younger than him. Can hit him square in the face without hesitation if he even tries to hurt my brother. If this actually happens, I'll update you guys on how hard his wimp falls to a girl 3 years younger and taking classes 1 grade below him. Except math which is at his grade level lol. Thank you. Next. On mobile. Like always. Meet the cast. EBM. Entitled band mommy BK. Entitled band kid BK1. One of my friends from band BK2 another friend from band no big deal, nice band dad, BK1's dad, D, director me, yours truly, female. This took place a little over a month ago, so details might be fuzzy. Backstory, I play the flute and I'm in both jazz band and a normal concert band. Because of this, I saved up money to buy a more expensive flute, a Yamaha 211. I treat my flute like it is my child. After you have band practice at my school, you are supposed to change out of your uniform and into your street clothes in a locker room. There are lockers for if you want to leave your instrument at school, but they are easy to break into, so I just take mine home. On to the story. We were warming up for concert band, when a new kid, EBK, came in. D introduced her, and lo and behold, she also played flute. She said that she was first chair in her other school, then proceeded to say its name. Her school's band is one of the worst in the state and has less than 30 members. D told her where to sit, and she was 7th flute. We have 12. She was pissed. After rehearsal, we all went to the locker rooms. While I was changing into my street clothes, I heard BK1 and BK2 yelling. I quickly finished changing, and there was EBK trying to get my flute from my friends. Me, what the fuck are you doing? EBK, they are trying to steal my flute. BK1, this is your flute, my name, she's trying to get it. Me, let go, now y'all should know this. I am an easy 6 feet 3 and she was about 5 feet 1. I guess I was intimidating, and she let go. She then ran out. I thought this was over, it wasn't. I waited for my friends to finish changing, and walked out to see EBK complaining to EBM. EBM walked over to me. EBM, why did you steal EBK's flute? BK1, she didn't. Your daughter tried to steal her, gestures to me, flute. EBM, 
Yeah right. EBM then starts walking towards me. We had to exit off of the stage, but we were not near the stairs. We were by the edge but the stairs were on the far right. I pushed past her to leave, and she fake fell over off of the stage. D rushes over. D, are you okay EBM? EBM, no. This bitch pushed me off the stage. D, really? I know, my name, and she wouldn't do that. EBK starts trying to get his mom to stop, but she wouldn't. The director then says that he would look at the security footage. EBM went pale, but D didn't notice. EBM, nervously laugh so it's fine. Just make sure she won't do it again. EBM and EBK rush out. They continue coming to practices, but every time EBK is sitting in my seat, on the last band practice before the concert, EBK and EBM come up to me. EBM, hi, give my daughter your flute since she is now playing first chair. Me, what? EBK begins trying to grab my flute, so I hold it over my head. BK1 and BK2 has seen what was happening and brought D over. D, what seems to be the problem? EBM, this fucker stole my poor EBK's flute. You need to kick her out of band. EBM also told the director that I slapped her kid, but that was an obvious lie. D, stop harassing my name, or I will call the police. My friends had already told D what had been happening. EBK, ugh, walks to seat. The rest of the practice went pretty normal, and so did the concert. After the concert, EBM grabs my flute. I was talking to one of my friends, and tries to run with it. I'm on track, so no way in hell would she be able to get away. D is talking to parents by the door, and BK2 yells at him to close it, and he does. I told him what happened, and he banned EBM and EBK from the school's band program. Right in front it BK1's dad, who is a member of the police force. No big deal, wait, what happened? D, explains. No big deal tells me that because there were witnesses, I could sue them for assault and for damaging my instrument. Of course I said yes, and his brother, who is a lawyer, helped me win the case. DD, LR, EM and EK tried to steal my flute, kick me out of band, and make me give up first chair. But because there were witnesses, I sued them and won the case. EK was also banned from the band program my school offers. Thank you, next. So this happened about 3 hours ago. I am a 14 year old who has a habit of smoking. So let's get into the story. EM equals entitled mother and the kid wasn't that entitled so I will call him kid. EM, talking with his son and approaching me says hi and asks if I have a cigarette. Me, yeah one second. She gives his son the cigarette and asks for a lighter. Me, I am not giving you shit now. I take the cigarette from his hand and put it back in the pack. EM. You give that back now or I am calling the police. Me. Yeah and get yourself arrested and give your child to CPS. EM. You also don't look of age. Me. Doesn't matter if you call the police on me. I would be happy that you do. EM angrily stares at me and pushes me. I just stare back and they are walking off. I take a photo of her clothes and call the police. Police arrest them a hour later and see the kid is sick cause of the EM buying a pack of cigarettes mom gets arrested and kid gets put in a foster home. This isn't as bad as the other ones on this sub, but this is the first encounter with entitled parents. Thank you, next. So not my story, but my friends. She's a midwife at a very busy hospital, and followed this EM with her pregnancy, with a lot of difficulty because she wouldn't show up at appointments or show up and demand being seen to when she wasn't scheduled. Entitled the entire pregnancy pretty much. Anyways comes the end of her term, except she doesn't go into labor. No big deal at first, she would just have to come in every few days for my friend to check on the baby and see if she need to get induced. Except she straight up refuses to get induced. My friend's advises her that for now she doesn't have to be, but later if she doesn't go into labor she'd be risking her life and the babies and sets up an appointment for a few days away. A few days later, she's a no-show, so my friend calls. Her patient refuses to go in because she doesn't want to be induced and that her and God know best, it'll come naturally. My friend calls every few days to try to convince the lady to come in, and finally gets the husband on the phone, explains the risks to him. He convinces the lady to come in for a checkup. Still no signs of labor and at this point she's quite a bit overdue. 
My friend explains once again that EM has to get induced otherwise she risks the babies and her own life. But EM says the same thing. God and her know best. My friend tells her her baby will die if she leaves the hospital. But EM demands to be discharged. The hospital cannot keep her against her will. Since neither her or the baby aren't in immediate danger. Meaning she could still maybe wait a day or two if monitored to be induced. So my friend has to let her go. Fast forward a few weeks later. EM is now way past being 3 weeks overdue. 2 weeks overdue is usually the very limit for most hospitals. And comes back complaining of stomach pain. My friend orders an immediate induction and checks with a quick echo to confirm her suspicions. The baby died in the womb. Because EM refused being induced and her placenta rot. My friend told me it was awful in the delivery room, not only because they were delivering a dead baby, but also because of the smell of the placenta and the baby. The stomach pains the mother was complaining about was the infection from the rot, and EM didn't even blame herself. She just shrugged it off as God's will and it wasn't meant to be. She made a full recovery and was let go from the hospital, totally plans on trying for a child again. Thank you. Next. Hi everyone. I'm not sure that this story belongs on here since everybody else met way crazier parents, but I need to say this. EP, you know the drill, it's the Karen, EK, the entitled kid, B, barista, ND, nice dude, me, my sister and mother and father go over to a coffee house, not well known but the coffee is too pretty good, anyways, we were chatting, when this hilarious looking lady, who is EP, walks in with her ugly ass son, looks like the apple didn't fall too far from the tree in terms of looks, and orders a coffee and a little slice of cake. Just a side note, but when I say she looks hilarious, I mean it. She had a leopard patterned dress, cherry red lipstick, curly blondish hair, and stupid high heels we could find at a dollar tree. No offense to those that wear these types of clothing but I swear it looked monstrous on her. We didn't think much of her until she goes outside. I could see her through a window. She takes the coffee and puts water in it from her flask. Then, she takes the slice of cake and ruins it. Then, she runs back into the store and this glorious conversation ensues. Disclaimer. I tried to translate as much as I could from Korean to English. But unfortunately, I am a Korean. American and my Korean is not the best. EP. To be. Hey. You sold us a ruined cake and watered down coffee. What do you have to say? Ha. Huh. B. I'm sorry mom. But we always check our foods before selling them to ensure top quality. EP. I don't care you little. I want to talk to your manager right now. The manager wasn't present at this time. Our family knows him. So I knew he was on a vacation with his wife. B. The manager isn't present at this time. So I was appointed as a substitute for his hiatus. EP, what kind of rundown place are you running you little? At this point, the EK starts crying, and B looked defeated. EP, look at what you have Dene. My precious is crying. B, I deeply apologize. We will replace your items with new ones. They are coming out in 5 minutes. EP, I don't want to wait another 5 minutes. I want IT now. EP runs for B and tries to grab his throat. She probably shouldn't have done that. Because the buff ND saw her watering her coffee and smashing her cake. He takes literally two large strides and simply lifts the screaming lady. Surprisingly, EK was trying to kick B's face. This is how murderers are made, children. EP, get your hands off of ME. ND, seriously? You just lied to be about the coffee and cake. Tried to strangle him. And this is how you talk? EP, shut up you. ND puts EP aside and EK follows her out the door. I can hear her screaming I'm never coming back to this damn place. The whole coffee house claps for ND. B ends up giving him a free cake. All slices. Me and my family still crack up about it. Although it could have taken a turn for the worse if ND wasn't there. TLDR. Karen strangles barista over a cup of coffee and cake that she ruined. 